Well, good morning, everybody. It's, you are a terrific crowd. It's so important that you are all here. You know, I've been at this in the, in the legislature for an awfully long time, and I can tell you that those who came before you a generation or more ago uh, here to Albany faced a, a very different environment than the one you do. You know, we still have an enormous amount of work to do, and I don't want to minimize that, but we should all take enormous encouragement from how far we have come and, and what we have all together accomplished, in many cases, uh, a lot quicker than almost anybody uh, would have imagined. Uh, and I don't know whether this will be the year that we will finally awaken the state senate and get agenda passed, but I do know, I certainly hope so, and you're going to help make that happen, but I do know that every year we get closer and closer to that victory. You know, we've debated agenda on the floor of the assembly now you know, I don't know how many times, four or five times, nobody can even really remember. It's, I suppose the good thing is that it's, I don't know if it's a good thing or not. The interesting thing is the debate is starting to get boring. You know, it, it is the same debate year after year. There's always a handful of people who go on and on about bathrooms. You may hear that uh, in your meetings today. The one thing I would urge you to ask people who, ask legislators and staff who are not on board with gender. Three quarters of New Yorkers have for some years now lived in a jurisdiction that has gender legislation on the books. In all that time, not a single one of the scare stories or horror stories that opponents of the bill talk about, not a single event has taken place or been documented. And so if you're talking to a legislator from Suffolk County where agenda law is on the books, can they cite a single case of any one of their constituents having a problem? If they can, they have kept it a secret from me even though I ask them every year in the floor debate to tell me. And the same is true for Rochester, for Ithaca, for Albany, for New York City, uh, for other communities I'm forgetting about. This is so overdue. You know, I, it, it occurred to me uh, in, uh, it, as I was getting ready to speak this morning, on my staff uh, between Albany and New York, I have at least one each of L, G, B, and T. And of that group, you know, the, the only one of them whose status or identity I was aware of before hiring him uh, was the transgender man, and that's because I've known him since he was like a little kid. Uh, and there was a time when having any one on your staff who was L or G or B or T uh, would have been a real eyebrow raiser. Uh, I think it is a, it is an important mark of how far we have come that things like that are, are scarcely noticed uh, these days in, in the legislature. And we need to build on how far we have come. We need to continue to get past uh, the very important things that are needed for, so that every one of 19 million New Yorkers can live uh, a full and fruitful life that we are all entitled to. So thank you all for being here.